Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heart of Amethyst. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, guys. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining and let's jump right in. Alarm Shan, you're up and let's go. <clears throat> Alright. Alright. Alarm Shan, you're up. Okay, alright. <clears throat> Swordsman Sh Oh, that is really loud. Holy hell, that is loud. There, okay. Swordsmanship is about technique and fitness and swiftness, but resistance and stamina play an important role as well. If you get tired or you falter, your enemy will use that as an opportunity to take you down. And then the best strategy is to tire your enemy? No, not at all. The best strategy is to take your enemy down as fast and clean as possible. It will happen if you're stronger and more, or more skilled. Still, there will be, enemy, there'll be enemies with your same level. So you must be ready to take them down by force if necessary. Project crouches down and draws a circle on the sand in front of me. There are four pillars that make a great warrior. He divides a circle in four equal parts and then draws some strange symbols on each segment. Strength. Adaptability. Technique. Endurance. Imagine this as your inner self. These four are flames that you must feed. That way they'll become stronger. Following that logic, what do you think is the best option for someone whose flame lacks wood? If feed them, feed them, right? Make them brighter. At first, that would seem like the obvious answer. But don't be an idiot. If you place the wood equally in all these flames, then they'll, you'll be nothing but an average warrior. Because there is always one flame that didn't ignite from the start. Maybe your body isn't strong enough or you suck at learning new techniques. My point is... In this scenario, the safest bet would be to feed the other flames. That way they'll make up for the missing one. Just by looking at you, you clearly lack strength. And that is something neither you or I can change. A bigger enemy will always have that advantage over you. This whole thing is such a Roderick thing to do. Even as he tries to be a good teacher, he can't help but insult me somehow. At this point, I just find it funny. Yesterday I trained you as if we were equals. But today I've noticed that I need to train you differently. If I want you to improve, of course. He didn't have to say it like that, but he's got a point. I'm smaller than most males, and I've never actually tried to build up muscle. And my physique comes from the many, my many travels that Mr. Biscotti and I did back in the day. Now that I mention it, I have some decent stamina thanks to those. There were days in which I had to walk for hours and hours without rest. Either way, I've come with some ideas for your training. You're not completely doomed. I nod to that, feeling a little inspired by his pep talk. He may be an asshole sometimes, but he may, he's making me feel hopeful. Maybe I'm not as weak as I thought. So, what are we doing here? I'm sure you can guess, Runt. He points towards the... He points? He points, he points towards the sea. For a split second, I swear that I saw an evil grin show in his face. Either way, I turn around and take a look. The waves are huge, and they're crashing against the rocks with a lot of force. There's no way he wants me to... I'll freaking die! Uh, we will be having a picnic, right? He doesn't seem to find my joke amusing at all, because the wolf just raises his eyebrow and grunts. Don't be stupid, Runt. We're here to train your endurance. We shall practice by the sea. Yeah, this guy's planning to kill me. He's going to make it look like an accident. This was his plan all along. Shake the expression off your face, Runt. It'll all be fine. Fine? Are you insane? Have you seen the sea? It'll crush me. That's the point, Runt. The wolf yells loudly as he crosses his arms. He seems really pissed by my reaction. But can you blame me? Of course it'll knock you down, but I'll be there, so you'll be fine, Runt. Still, it's your decision. If you want to be a coward and leave, then fine by me. I have more important things to attend to anyway. He gives me a severe look as I turn around and check the ocean one last time. I could easily die if things go south. Here if he says he'll be there, what if something happens? What should I do? I give it a try. Okay, let's think this properly. So far, Roderick's methods have been unorthodox, to say the least. At last time, he hit me really hard with a stick. Multiple times, mind you. But oddly enough, I feel like he really does it with purpose. I mean, yesterday he was my first was my first day ever grabbing a sword, and I didn't and I didn't do half bad. So maybe, and just maybe, I should trust him with this as well. And don't get me wrong, I'm scared as hell, and I have no real reason to trust him. I call it a hunch. Gulping, I nod a few times as I let him know that I'm willing to do it. And to that, he just nods back. 
good. Looks like you looks like you grew some balls. The wolf takes off his shirt and his boots. He then hangs on hangs them on a tree branch, making sure to leave them out of the sand's reach. I do the same, but to be honest, I don't care much about the sand, so I do leave them by the beach. Runt, I told you to take that on. Shake off that expression. Everything will be fine. Now come with me. He turns around, giving me a nice view of his broad back. Uh, maybe agreeing to this wasn't such a bad idea after all. No, Ellie, stop. No, Eli, 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 stop. This is just the heat talking. I need to focus. After I mentally slapped myself a few times, I decide to follow his example to get in, and get into the water. A wave, a wave hits my ankles rather harshly, making almost making me fall. The wolf offers me his hand to me, and I don't think twice before taking it. From now on, I would rather stay directly behind him. I use his large self as some sort of muscular shield. Anyway, we eventually stop a few feet away from the shore. Water reaches my belly, sending shivers down my spine. It's so freaking cold! Come on, get in front of me. I do as he says, slowly but steadily walking in front of him. I have to battle waves to get there, but I manage. Once I'm finally located, Roderick lets go of me and remains behind me. His body is mere inches away from mine. He wasn't kidding when he said he would have my back. Uh -huh. Maybe I spoke too soon. Because I got my footing, a huge wave came in and crushed me completely. All goes black in a flash and my ears begin to ring. I don't know where I am or what to do. All I know is that I have water inside my nose and mouth. Yikes, what a disgusting sensation. It feels like my eyeballs and nostrils are burning. Stand up, runt. You're fine. Hearing Roderick's voice calms me down a little because it means I haven't broken my back against those rocks yet. Wolf slowly helps me back, onto, uh, back onto my feet. Gee, can this guy's chest be any firmer? At first I thought I had hit a rock. Are you sure this is the best way to improve my resistance? Wouldn't you prefer to hit me with some more with a stick? I try to joke around as if sometimes, as sometimes helps with the pain. Sometimes. As lovely as that sounds, this training is necessary. So man up, runt. We're not alone. Those are the exact words I didn't want to hear. Luckily for me, the wolf doesn't push me off his chest or forcefully makes me stand up. Roderick is being oddly patient about this whole thing, giving me enough time to catch my breath. What is more impressive, though, is that the wolf doesn't move an inch after being attacked by countless waves. What is he really made of? Uh, sterner stuff. Man, after such a long day, all I want to do is lay on my bed and rest. Shit, I really don't want to go and play with that spoiled princess. But I'm not risking getting on Ruby's bad side again. As I walk back to my room, I notice Zack standing by the door of the bathroom. The little dog's ears perk up as he notices my presence, offering me a shy smile. I return the smile until they walk back towards him. He looks happy to see me, which is always a nice thing. Welcome back, Master. I, I hope you had a great day. It was okay. How about yours? He smiled as I asked him that, his tail wagging excitedly on his back. We Well, I finished all my tasks for today, including preparing the bath. Uh, oh, and I also started to, uh, sew, to sew a new sweater. Uh, the one I'm wearing is a little old, so I thought it'd be nice to make a new one. To be honest, I'm quite impressed by Zack's set of skills. Is there anything he can't do? I didn't know you. I didn't know you so. Well, that's awesome. But thank you, Master. I do it in my free time. His tail keeps wagging like crazy, and this is the first time he's actually managed to maintain a conversation with me for a minute straight. I see this. I'll see this as a win. Hopefully, he's starting to feel more comfortable around me. By the way, Master, Madame Ruby came by early. She just wanted me to remind you that the princess doesn't want to be left waiting. I told her that you would meet her when you took your bath. O or I thought about saying it. He whispered that last part to himself, shying away as he did so. Can't really blame him. Ruby can be pretty intimidating. Thank you, Zack. I'll go ahead and take a bath then. It seems at time. It seems at this time there will be nothing separating me from relaxing, from a relaxing time in that heavenly bathtub, and I'm planning to really enjoy it. The thought alone makes my body shiver and my neck first stand. So, not wanting to delay, for, delay it further, I give Zack one last smile before entering the bathroom. Once inside, I make sure to lock the door behind me, as I don't want anyone to walk in on me and my, me and my naked self. There was this one time when... No, never mind. Said memories are meant to be forgotten. Anyway, after double-checking that the door is locked, I decide to take a look around the room and admire Zack's handiwork. I have to give it to him. He did an amazing job cleaning this place up. The walls in the tub seem to have been polished to perfection. The tub looks as smooth as marble. Actually, scratch that. This is really, this is really marble. For a second there, I forgot who I was dealing with. This is the king's bath. Of course they would have the real deal in here. As I continue my inspection of the room, I notice that all the bathing products have been organized by size and the towels hang in their respective places. 
the whole room also has a nice smell to it. Lavender, if I'm not mistaken. It's coming from the water, so I'm guessing Zach placed one of those fancy bath products in it for me. Now that I think about it, lavender used to be Mom's favorite flower. That brings a smile to my face as I can't help but reminisce. I wonder if my mother would have liked to wash herself in a place like this. I slap myself on both cheeks for good measure. Stop that, Eli. El Eli. Yep, Eli. There's no use in thinking about stuff like that. She, she would have wanted you to enjoy this moment. As my mind continues back to rea comes back to reality, I find myself looking straight to the mirror. It's weird. It was, wasn't here yesterday, if I'm not wrong. Did Zach place it here? I wonder why he did it. Actually, it doesn't matter. I think it's a good time to stop passing around and get my ass in the water. It might get cold if I don't hurry. Talking about that, I decided to give it a try and touch it with my left paw. This is expected. The temperature is perfect. Yeah, let's undress, then. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Oh, whoa! Yep. Gonna have to block that. <laughs> Gonna have to censor that out. I take my shirt off, then my pants, and lastly my underwear. I curl them into a ball and throw them in a corner. I then take a deep breath as I throw myself inside the tub. I try to enjoy the feeling of the warm water to the fullest as I submerge myself in it. This is something I can definitely see myself getting used to. It's just good. It's just way too good. And back in Yagnir, the best place to take a bath was the cold, freezing lake, which is filled with algae in spring. Gee, you would get out, you would get out of that water smelling awful. And yet Mr. Biscotti used to make me do it all the time. He said it was good to build character. According to him, if you bathed in it each month, you would never go sick. Still, I never saw him take a bath in the lake even once. He would always take water from the well with when he thought no one was looking. Such a silly man he is. Dang it. I bet he's worried sick. I hope my letter reached him. I need to go back one way or another. I can't leave him by himself. I'm the only family he has. The king said he would be able to leave soon. Said I would be able to leave sooner than later, but I can't help but feeling anxious about thinking about that. When will that be? For how long will I be forced to stay here? I mean, I can't really complain. They've given me my own butler and all. But still, maybe this was his plan from the beginning. Luring me in until I wouldn't want to leave, but what would his purpose be? That's the question that has been stuck in my head ever since we had that talk. I try to ignore it as best I can. He must have a reason. But what could the reason be? What does he want with me? I sigh, not wanting to think about it any longer. That's an issue for future Eli. Present present Eli should just be trying to enjoy a relaxing bath. I let myself get dragged into the water. Seems like I managed to bring myself to bring my mood down. Oh, that's a cute Oh, that's good. Hello, thumbnail. <laughs> Many thoughts fill my head at, at once, and all I can do is stare blankly into the room. It's not like I can do anything to improve my situation. I'm stuck here. But that's what I say to myself, as I'm feeling hopeless. The droplets of water fall back into the tub, making a nice and relaxing sound. This is really odd. All of a sudden, I feel like this is not real at all. One moment I was there, enjoying the warmth of the water as I tried to relax, and the next moment I'm just here, existing. Sometimes I wonder if, he, if I did die that day, back in the forest. My heart pierced by the dagger, bleeding my life away. That is a thought that haunts me in my lowest moments. Maybe next morning I'll just wake up in that pool of nothing. Maybe that's the real me and this whole thing is just an imagination. I'm living a lie. Because I don't want to be alone. I'm left in the dark. It scares me. It really does. Crap, I'm doing it again. I really hate that this happens, but sometimes I just can't help myself. It's one of the many reasons why I don't like being left alone. My thoughts just eat me alive as if my brain was my biggest enemy and I didn't know why. Maybe I should just try to focus on something else. Remembering the good things in my life usually helps me, so I'll do that. I picture my life in the city with Mr. and Mrs. Biscotti. Those two have really been my support throughout the years. I've been lucky enough to have that I've, I've been lucky enough to have had two wonderful pairs of parents. They've given me all I could have wished for, and I'm grateful for that. The goddesses gave me another chance in life, a chance to amend for my mistakes and keep the promise that that I made. But what do I go and what do I do? I get myself involved with a band of thieves? And apparently terrorists? What a bloody mess I got myself into. They set you up. No, that can't be. I won't believe that for a second. Hugo is not that kind of person. It was that damn coward. He left me there to die. I swear to the goddesses, if I ever see him again. I push my fist at the mere thought of that asshole. It sets my blood ablaze. I can't crumble now. I have, a, I have a lot on the line. One second, guys. Okay, there we go. What the hell is it? No, that's a big piece of hair. No, get off. Get off. Okay. I can't crumble now. I have a lot on the line. Besides, there is a game I must win tonight. 
Not by choice, of course, but I might as well give it my best shot. I'll show that spoiled girl what I can really do. I'll show that princess with many hours of playing against Mr. Biscotti has taught me. And then I'll go to bed. I'll wait patiently for the next day. I'll show everyone what I can really do. The King. Almond. Roderick. Icalus. Even Ruby. I'll show them. But for now, I should just enjoy the bath. Tomorrow shall be another day. Chapter 2. The City of Mysteries. Let's go try Reem. No pillow there. I see sweat running down the princess's forehead. She's nervous. She should be, as I'm just a few moves away from winning this game. Three of my soldiers have been ascended to night captains, and my kidnapped queen is halfway across the board, which means that I'm close to reclaiming her. After that, it'll just be a matter of time before her army surrenders. So, aren't you a little scared? Ah, I see what you're doing there, princess. But sadly for you, trying to distract me is pretty much impossible. I'm far too focused on the game to be distracted by small talk. Scared? Of? She finally does her move, making her magician advance forward. I see. She's trying to kill the knight who is accompanying my rescued queen. But she probably doesn't remember that I still have a sniper hidden in the forest. She's so obsessed at trying to stop the knight, which means she's getting reckless. I smiled to myself, feeling extremely confident in my strategy. Still, I try to act normal. I don't want her to think I have a plan. You know, I'm about your test tomorrow. I moved my knight a few squares closer to my castle. My dear queen will be safe soon enough. Roderick said I would be fine. I'll trust his word. She then moves her magician closer to my knight. Placing it, a perfect, perfect, placing it in a perfect range for my sniper to kill. So as soon as I move my little figurine out of the forest, her smile fades. The sniper does a ranged attack on the mage, killing it instantly, as mages have very poor defense. And now, only ten of her troops remain, while I have sixteen of mine. Her face goes from disbelief to anger in a matter of seconds, so I ready myself for another one of her tantrums. You're cheating! You weren't this good before! I should just shrug my shoulders and, her, and offer her a blank look. I've been playing with a callus, and he's really good at this game. So playing against her, it's like a child's play. Your Majesty, please calm down. Not all is lost. You should keep a clear head. Before things get out of hand, Ruby jumps to the rescue and manages to calm her down. I sigh in relief because when she gets angry, things usually get thrown around. Towards me most of the time. There was this one time when she threw the board so hard that one of my figurines hit my eye. I couldn't see anything of that eye for a couple days. Anyway, we resume the game. It's her turn and she uses it to move the entirety of her forces into the castle. I see. She's given up on the uh, taking back my queen. She'll likely try to win by weakening my own forces as she barricades herself inside her fortress. Hmm, it's not a bad strategy. Unluckily for her, I still have some snipers and mages left. Her walls won't be able to protect her from my ranged attacks, and she can't retaliate because I've killed most of her ranged units. The only way she can win is by praying that my roll sucks. But that's unlikely. He's a knight, you know. He's been training you for far he's been training far longer than you. You have no chance. I give her a nasty look, but she returns it with a smile. If I listen to her taunts now, I'll lose focus. I need to think of my strategy properly. Alright guys, I'm gonna save it right here. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Got a little bit of editing to do to get that sheath and the sheath out of there. To get the sheath out of there. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tick if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!